everybody, welcome to The Art of Comics. I'm your host, Andre Salazar. Thank you very much for watching. Today, we're gonna talk about this beast, Nausicaa. <laughs> oh yeah, this is one of those books I've always wanted to get. Um, I am not a manga expert, but I love manga. I love the storytelling, I love what they do. And I've heard, I'm a big fan of Miyazaki, and so I'm like, okay, I need to get Nausicaa and the Valley of the Wind. I gotta get this book. Well, this is a part one, there's another part two, it's the same size, a big double double beastie book in a clamshell. Maybe I should just get it real quick. Hang on, let's just grab it. Right here. Okay. So, this mama here is on Amazon. Uh, it's actually pretty cheap on Amazon. I think this is normally like around 80 bucks, but it's a lot cheaper on Amazon. It's like 40 maybe, pretty good. And they're big hardcover guys. I would recommend if you're gonna get it, get this because it's big. Um, you know, as you know, a lot of manga is smaller. So this is nice because you get the really big size. You can really um, love the artwork. And it even comes with a little art plate or poster. What does this come with? Hang on, let's check it out. Oh, it comes with this cute little picture of Nausicaa. Boom. So you get a little poster here on this side. You get another one here, so you can decorate your bedroom. Uh, so that's kind of cute. Great value. This is uh, produced by Viz here in the States. Um, of course, this is a part of Studio Ghibli's library. Beautiful, beautiful design. We're going to talk about this book because, um, you know, I've done videos. If you check out my video about finding your art parents, I talk about... Um, finding artists and creators that you can kind of crib from, learn from, and kind of pattern yourself in the beginning from. This guy here is probably one of the best ever, like legit, like one of the best. You know, you got Will Eisner, you've got Harvey Kurtzman, Wally Wood, you know, the big names, you know, Alan Moore, more modern names, Me, you know, Mobius, you got to put Miyazaki in that in that discussion, um, but this guy is so beyond me that it's insane. Let's go check it out right now. Let's go down and dive it into it. Okay, guys, here we are. Thank you for checking out my video on Nausicaa. Huge fan of Miyazaki, and so a little history about this book. This is his. Um, this is the manga that he made in between some his first film. He couldn't get a film made, and so he said, I'm gonna just be a mangaka, make this manga, make this entire story, this huge story. And then it was after this was made that they made the film, but this was not made to be made a film. It was just, a, it was something that he couldn't get a film off the ground. He was having some problems with financiers and studios doing one of his films and so he just said i'm gonna do a manga and uh it's, this is this it really is beyond me in a lot of ways it's beyond a lot of people um so let's just get into it this is the only color little spots it's kind of neat uh we don't see a lot of this he does some kind of watercolor and painted stuff but most of it's going to be just his uh penciled work this is kind of neat this little map here uh, this is by Viz. It's in English, but it's done uh, the kind of traditional Japanese way from back to front. Um, and it's going to be read like a manga too, which I'll show you, of course. You guys know how to read mangas. Um, so, um, Hayao Miyazaki, Nausicaa, here we are. And we're going to just like dive into this puppy right now. Um, one of the things that I love about this book that I'm super impressed by is the pencil work. Uh, and th I love this edition. It's so nice and big. And this, you'll see that this isn't really like a true black. It's, I, I feel like it's this dark brown, which really works well with the theme of this kind of nature and um, this natural kind of look to things. So I like the cream on the dark brown a lot. I think this just looks cool. We start off with the glider, and I'm just we're just gonna do like part of this book because it's so massive. 
basically this is the way we're gonna do it, guys. If I get enough views, if I get like 100, 150 views, then I'll do part two and we can do like a number of videos. If we don't get that many views of this, I'm not gonna bother like keep doing videos of something that no one wants. So we're just gonna do part one, which may be a part two if we get the views. How's that go, okay? So if you want more about this, you know, give me some comments. Tell me you want me to do it. If I hear someone tell me, I'll do it. Otherwise, we ain't doing it. Um, I don't know the original size, but I really wanna know because I love the ink work and it is so wonderful. The line work he's doing here, even, I haven't even turned pages yet, guys. Um, the line work is so good. I'm assuming it's like two up from this or one and a half up at least, but I don't know. I would like to know what the originals look like. Uh, great stuff, very organic. He does rule these borders pretty straight, but everything else is very organic. You're gonna see all the technology and stuff is all has this kind of organic line quality. This really is just magnificent. Um, this book is about nature. It's about uh, technology, these warring civilizations. He draws fungus and plant life so well. I would love to have seen his sketchbooks and the research material he used to do this because it really is great. The way he incorporates different types and classifications of fungi together in these clusters and groups is really neat. Okay. So look at this. I mean, this is, can you even, I mean, you gotta maximize this guys on your screen. Look at this, not through a phone, but check this out uh, on the big computer because this is great stuff. We learned that there's these uh, shells that are from these huge like uh, beetle type creatures. And we don't know what the story is with them. We will learn that they are critical to this, this story of how the spore spread and how the world has turned into this kind of fungi plant kingdom versus the animal kingdom. Uh, so we meet Nausicaa and uh, she's collecting samples. I mean, look at this work, the depth of this panel and so much is going on. I don't know the time it took to do this, but this isn't some simple you know, manga with with speed lines going in the background of someone getting punched in the face. This takes a lot of time. All the hatching and cross hatching. And it reminds me too of some Mobius. And I, I made some correlation between Miyazaki and Mobius before, and I didn't realize, but they were good close friends. Um, I knew they were contemporaries. Um, you know, one's in France, one's in Japan, but I didn't know that they were friends. And I believe the daughter, I want to say Mobius's daughter is named after Miyazaki. Uh, it could be the reverse though. But somebody's kid is named after the other. Um, brilliant stuff. And I really just love, again, a lot of cross hatching, a lot of stuff. It reminds me of some Mobius type work. Everything here is the line quality in this book is phenomenal. The pages, the layout is phenomenal. The, it's just, I just, I can't tell you how, how hard this is to design this type of stuff. And um, it's very simple. It's organic, the technology. This just the idea of the flyer is so cool and how it works. And just the, this, this is just such a cool panel. And the, sh the, you know, he puts this shadow here so there's only like, you know, four or five feet off the ground and the speed and the smoke going here. And and he does use some speed lines, but it's not like full on. It's just little bits and stuff. It's just really, really well done. But I might kind of steal this idea because um, I've been doing some speed lines all the way across. So I might kind of take some of that. But look at this great stuff here. Such great texture. This is all hand done, crafted. Uh, he does use some some uh, screen tones, so we're gonna use some gray screen tones and things like that, but it's not overly done. And then look at this. He draws these huge, monstrous, you know, insects with such detail and such intricacy. 
Uh, it's great, and look at the bark of the trees and things. Um, so Nausicaa is a girl that has this ability to kind of communicate with the animal kingdom. She's connected to nature. Uh, she's trained by this warrior guy. She's the daughter of the king of this of this land of Nausicaa. And she's going to get embroiled in this big war. And there's this big war. And I haven't even read this whole book. I'm only about up to like here. And there's still volume two. So there's a lot for me to read. And uh, it's just pretty dense and big. But I should probably just sit down and just bang more out. Because it's such a delight. Um, the problem with this is like there's so many other things I want to read too and learn from. But this is um, a delight. And crafted so well and I can't believe I don't know what his schedule was for this but um, you know look at how many panels are in here can we just talk about that for a minute I mean look at this one two three four five six seven eight nine ten eleven eleven panels here usually things are broken up in thirds he's breaking things up in fourths sometimes even more you know so there's a lot of action a lot of things going on and there's a lot of dialogue too, and he's still able to tell the story and some good, interesting drawing, even with the uh, large amount of words, which is not an easy feat, because a lot of times you'll find yourself creating something and your freaking words are covering up a face or a critical part of the anatomy uh, in the panel, and then you're like, great, now what do I do? I gotta shrink down the thing or whatever, it's a pain. So he's just brilliant in how he does this. Uh, so yeah, we're talking about war and um, man, just really great stuff. There is a mystical element, some magic, and we're gonna get into that. Miyazaki also, as you probably know, is a big fan of aviation and planes and things like that. We're gonna see a lot of planes in this story we're gonna see a lot of dog fights and things like that, and um, and it's and it's actually super fun to see that. So I actually remember getting this because there was a like a book club, there was a manga book club that I was interested in, and um, I went to this manga. I was part of this online manga book club, and they were gonna read this. Look at these maggots and these insects that are attacking this big carrier. I mean, the detail of this, you guys, is so neat. It's just like all these little bugs and creatures and just like grubs and things just attacking. It's just so, my gosh, I could not have figured this out. It's so neat. It's just so neat. Oh, man. It's just a great story. Um, and it's a mature story. It's not like, um, you know... I would say this is more mature than his other things. Uh, this is kind of more maybe in the line of like, um, you know, Princess Mononoke, something like that. It's not really like a kid's story necessarily, though. I wouldn't go, I wouldn't say that, that's for sure. Um, so, again, great design of aircraft, great use of lighting. Look at the lighting here. Look at how. You know, also you got the lighting up coming in through the shadows of the clouds. Um, and just the modeling lighting of this vehicle is just so cool. Um, just really clever, man. And all the, just the, the way he crafts it. It's metal, but it's got an organic quality to it. And that's that line quality that everything is just like made. Uh, you know, he's not using a bunch of rulers and French curves and things like that to give it a antiseptic or sterile harsh line. Everything feels like it is done by hand, you know, which I think is critical for the story. Uh, I could sit here, we could just sit here and pour over these pages, which is what I'm tempted to do, but I think here at 15 minutes, <clears throat> I think you get a gist of what this is about and what, what I'm trying to convey to you of why this is a master. Great pacing, great storytelling, uh, this big epic. This is a, a, a epic story uh, of these warring nations and how there's this other war upon earth and things. Look at this great um, 
great action to. And, uh, and yeah, so Nausicaa is a little badass too. She's a great heroine. Um, yeah, look at that, just blasting through. Just some great, great energy. Um, I haven't seen the movie. I want to see the movie, but I actually kind of want to finish this book before I do. It's a great explosions. Um, it's not a quiet story. I mean, there's some good stuff going on. There's this princess too. There's a kind of a chancellor guy who's kind of a doofus that's got his own agenda going on. Um, and yeah, it's just a really, really great, fun story. Highly recommended. I think that's all we're going to do right now. Um, I could do more about this, but I like to read more and maybe do another video. Let me know what you guys think. Uh, but this is a wonderful story. It honestly ranks as some of the highest stuff I've ever read, legit. Um, and there's a, there's a great maturity and craftsmanship level on this that you just don't see. And so there you go. That's Nausicaa. Hey, thanks for watching, guys. Checking out my videos. I appreciate it. I put some time into this, and I appreciate you guys checking out. It's all free, baby. Uh, check out my Patreon. I got a lot of cool free stuff there as well. A lot of public posts I do with my own comics and things that I'm working on. And uh, thanks for watching.